Welcome back, Deadites and Ghost Beaters. And if you're new to the channel, I am Old Head Gaming. And of course, if you want to keep up with all the latest horror ASIM information, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for all horror related videos. And guys, I'm sorry, this video is going to be definitely late. I needed some time to think about how I wanted to phrase things because when I first read these patch notes, I was so livid and so hot headed, and still, I'm still angry. I just wanted to not do like my raw reactions because that's not what I like to do. I don't like to do like roar, angry, smash type of videos. Like that's not how I am. But I do feel like this. You'll die in the graveyard before you get it. Hey, uh, what's that you got on your face? Huh? Blah, blah. And I'll explain why as a PC player I feel like this once we hop over and take a look at these patch notes. Now, I'm not going to say I didn't love a lot about this update, and we'll talk about the one thing that I think is an absolutely dangerous precedent moving forward once we break all these down. Now, we don't know the exact time it's coming tomorrow. It's early tomorrow, Eastern time, September 5th. But what are in the actual patch notes? Well, the first thing is they fixed the PC stuttering on an ultra graphic setting. Now, the first night we went live with TCM, you saw every time I'd hit someone with Sissy or Leatherface, my computer would just almost crumb to a crawl. Like it just wigged out. I had to turn my settings down immediately, even though I had everything I needed to actually run the game fine. This fix resolves graphical issues when running the game on ultra settings with appropriate hardware. This also fixes an issue causing FPS drops when attacking or grappling with opponents while running on the game on ultra settings with appropriate hardware. Exactly what I was mentioning. I'd hit someone, wig out. All right, they also fixed voice chat not working in lobby for party members. This fixed an issue where party members would lose voice chat functionality once in the lobby. Easy peasy. All right, they went after the XP progression problem. This fix resolves an UI issue that would appear to rank up after every match, despite not getting the acquired XP to do so. And it also fixed an issue inaccurate XP and XP delays related to earning XP. Like for example, when we were streaming yesterday, I should have been leveling up like three matches in a row near the end, but it took all three of them before I finally got the XP to save and push me over that line. All right, they also fixed various crashes and freezes. This includes a PS4 crash related to unlocking trophies, and it also includes a fix for high-level players experiencing a crash on match results in the screen. We changed key binding for PC players. We've added key rebinding to the PC version of the game. Now, this is really good. I want to rebind a lot of stuff, but we couldn't. It was actually in <laughs> the tech test, so I was really surprised this wasn't available at launch. Here is the first major change, and I like what they're doing, but I will see how this works out. We have changed lobbies, will now launch with six players, and this has been confirmed by Matt from Gun. This is how it works. This change should help lobbies get running smoother, quicker, and with less drops due to incomplete lobbies. Leatherface is still required. So basically, if you have three family members, one must be Leatherface, and three victims, the four slots still open when the timer runs down, the lobby won't reset anymore. You'll go 3v3 instead of 4v3. Change quick match menu. We've moved quick match to the top of the menu options when looking to join games. A quick match will result in not only quicker matchmaking in the lobby, but also fuller lobbies. I'm going to skip the next one. We'll come back to it because I'm going to get on a soapbox on that one. Tuning, EAC, and anti-cheat improvements. We've made several improvements to our anti-cheat and protection from additional cheat resources. Now, here's the big one, and this is, for me, one of the most dangerous precedents I have ever seen with a game, and I'll break it down a little bit further once we're out of here, but here's what happened. PC has been removed from crossplay. We are temporarily separating PC from the console player base and cross-play while we continue to improve our anti-cheat tools and resources. And then sometime later this week, we're going to get a new update on the Muerto Times, where it tells us what's coming in the next update, what they're working on, or what they know, but they have no clue how to fix it. <sighs> now, a lot of this stuff is really, really good. Like, here's the thing. I absolutely think cheating should be removed from the game and hackers should be pulled out of the game. I have never once been pro hacker ever, but removing PC from crossplay and the fact that we don't have cross progression is an absolute disaster of a decision. And here's the thing. I've seen a lot of PC warriors saying how much they're angry about this. I've seen a lot of console warriors saying, get the hell out of here. We don't need you PC players. And I hate that we're brought to that because like, that's not what this is about. But as Matt said here, this could be four weeks. We're hoping sooner. 
I'm gonna be honest with you. The, the lo as long as this game has no crossplay on PC, I'm not playing. I don't have any interest in playing. I don't want to play because here's the thing. I have a great community and I hate playing games in solo queue mode for ASIMS. I just don't like solo queuing. I never have, I never will. And the fact that I can't play with my heavily Xbox community because I am now isolated with PC players means I don't want to play because I can't hop over because there's no cross progression to my Series X and play on there and have my account transfer over. So because there's no cross progression, anyone that wanted to play it on, say, Game Pass while they're in isolation on PC could then hop over. But that doesn't exist. So here's the thing that I think is the biggest problem. And this is the dangerous precedent set because the rumor is the reason there's such a bad hacker problem is because they're using old code that they'd used in previous games and the hackers knew how to immediately bypass it, which makes sense. The fact that there was hackers from day one, like this game was the quickest game I have ever seen riddled with hackers. And let's be honest, they need to update those protections. They need to fix the, the EAC. They need to update the anti-cheat. All those things are absolutely important important but how does isolating pc players change that it doesn't all it does is let us deal with the hackers and not play with our friends great cool so what happens down the road in say two months where maybe this fix doesn't work well obviously the thing is you remove pc players again while you try to fix it again what happens a year from now if this doesn't work well obviously the choice is you remove pc players and I love the developers. I think they have nothing but the best interest in hand. But for me personally, that makes no sense. And it leaves me in a situation where I don't feel comfortable with the game. Now, some people are going to say I'm overreacting. And that is completely your opinion. But here's the thing. I don't want to play a game that I don't feel comfortable with. Maybe if it's, you know, a day or two, I won't be so mad. And maybe this will never happen again and I'll play the game and be perfectly happy. But there's always going to be this part in the back of my mind now where I've logged plenty of hours on this game and have not come across a single PC hacker. I have come against two PlayStation lag switchers, though. But, you know, well, we're not going to talk about that because, you know, console doesn't cheat. It's always those evil PC players. And I'm not a PC warrior by any stretch of the imagination. I play on everything. I just don't think this is a very good decision. And I think it sets a really terrible precedent. But that's maybe just my opinion. I want to hear your thoughts are in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and later mates.